Hi everyone, Dredgen here, and today we are going the budget route and reviewing the Yanzi KC84. So the Yanzi KC84 is a wired, plastic, hot swap, north facing, 75% keyboard that is priced quite well at $89. You can get it on Amazon or you can also go directly to the Yonzi online store. It is my first time reviewing a board from Yonzi and from what I've seen, they also sell keyboards and accessories from other brands like Akko. The KC84 does seem like a rebranded OEM keyboard but I honestly don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. We still need to evaluate the keyboard based on its merits. The unboxing is quite simple, you get the keyboard. a non-braided USB cable, a switch, and a keycap puller. Going to the design and layout, you do get a lot of color options which is always nice. I went with the race white version that has a white angled case. The layout here is the usual 75% layout. This is a good layout for those who want something more compact than a TKL but use the function rows regularly. This gives you arrow keys on the lower right of the board, a single row for your navigation keys on the right side, and single unit modifiers beside the arrow keys. Personally, I find this layout looking a bit too cramped, but that's just my personal preference. Finding replacement keycaps will also get a bit tricky since this layout is not standard. Speaking of keycaps, the ones here are backlit and two-toned white and gray. They are decent, not that thick, but they do feel good to type on. The only issue is that the legends here are the ones where you have slits on the letters, but for this price point, I'm okay with it. The default typing angle is fine and you get single step adjustable feet, but I think that angle is a bit too high, so I just use the default one. Going to the back of the case, you'll see that the USB Type-C socket is placed way back here. This would be okay if your cable is a regular USB cable since this allows you to use the cable routing channels but if you use custom coiled cables like I do, there's a good chance that it will not fit the board. I would also advise you to be careful with the routing channels since I broke the included USB cable using this. It seems that the bend puts too much stress on the cable, so be careful. The build quality of the case is also a bit questionable. The material used for the case seems too thin and you do feel that when holding the board. Even just moving the board on your desk, you can feel the sides squeak a bit with the slightest pressure. The bottom of the case does feel solid so I'm not sure why they had something quite flimsy for the sides. Okay, so let's do a typing test. So as you can hear, it actually sounds okay for a pre-built keyboard. There is a bit of rattle on the stabs which is expected and a bit of spring ping on the switches since these are not lubed. The good thing is that this keyboard is hot swappable meaning you can change the switches and the stabilizers by simply pulling them out. Which is what we'll do here. We'll do a quick build so you can get an idea how this keyboard is when you customize it. Do take note that the hot swap sockets here are north facing, so you may get interference on the switches if you use cherry profile keycaps. To avoid that, you can use keycaps that have a different profile, 
or you can use a switch that has a long stem pole which is what we'll use here. These are the Texi Kingfisher switches. These are linear switches and as you can see here, compared to a normal mechanical keyboard switch, the stem pole of the Kingfisher switch is longer so this avoids interference since your keycaps would not hit the top of the switch even if it's cherry profile. This one is also priced quite well at 60 cents a switch. A lot of budget keyboards have north facing sockets so having a switch that allows you to use any keycap you want is really nice. These were sent in by channel sponsor Zion Studios. They are an official vendor for the keyboard brands that you see on screen and this switch is currently available on their store. There have been some stores popping up trying to pose as Zion Studios so make sure that you buy only from their official accounts. The keycaps that we'll use here are Yunzi's Aco Neon keycaps. These are double shot PBT keycaps. They are quite thick and they feel really nice in the hand. These are more on the mid-range price at $60 but they look really good as you can see here. These also come in a very nice case and I do hope they produce more colorways since it's hard to find good keycaps at this price point. I also lubed and band aid modded the stabs. Here is the custom build sound test. As you heard, it sounds really nice. To be honest, I was quite surprised that it sounded that good, though I think the Kingfisher switches did a lot of the heavy lifting. I think the switches also have a shorter travel, but I haven't confirmed that yet. The Echo keycaps look really nice, though they may go better with a darker looking case. There is still a bit of rattle on the stabs, but it sounds way better compared to how it was before. This goes to show how much your typing experience can improve if you lube your switches and mod your stabs. Going to the software, Yunzi did send out a link for the KC84 software which I will link down below. You can customize key assignments, lighting, and set up macros on the board. Going to the competition, well there is a lot in the market right now, which is good. Direct competitions are the rebrands of this one like the Epo Maker EP84. The Yunzi Echo 3084 is also a good alternative if you want something that looks good though it is not hot swap and the typing experience is not that good. At least in my eyes, the biggest competition is the Keychron K2 which is a bit more expensive but you do get Bluetooth and a metal frame on the $100 version though it only comes in a black colorway. Choosing between these alternatives will mostly be driven by your preferences in terms of design and functionality. 
To summarize, I think the Yonzi KC84 is a good beginner keyboard for those who want to dip their toes in the hobby. The layout makes it more accessible compared to the popular 60% in the market, and it is hot swap which is a must for those who want to try to customize their typing experience. However, the build quality is not that good and some of the design choices can be improved, but for the price, it's acceptable. Just take time to work on your stabs and lube your switches and you should have a good keyboard in your hands. And that is it for this video. I have also made other budget keyboard builds and the links will be shown on the screen if you are interested. If you enjoyed this one, please do consider subscribing and I hope I have helped you in deciding whether this is the keyboard for you. See you on the next one. Bye!